They're the best. <laughs> if you're counting down to either a story conclusion or incredible character deaths, today's your lucky day. We're getting so close. <laughs> Speaking of, so last time, everyone went up to the Abbey of St. Markovia to figure out, well, exactly where are these bodies being stolen from. Invited in for some nice lunch, found some great old people who needed to be brought to justice. And they were for, you know, creating living flesh golem experiments with little girl spirits and themselves, apparently, because they will not stay dead anymore. Glovia Falinescu has found, through sponsored partnership with Strahd and a very corrupted Deva, a way to funnel souls into new bodies with surprising accuracy and power. Most everybody ate it really quickly because uh, that's what happens when you fight angels and monsters nobody died permanently yeah uh, you can become monsters or you can be taken up and out of frame as was Dantir who we'll get to in just a second everyone did survive Ezra teleported themselves and Sigrid out using Dimension Door to... Well, it would normally be with a plum, but turned out to be something of a twist and got them... Yeah. I got them at least to the front of town of Kresk, where the walls were being assaulted by dire wolves and worse, werewolf clans at the door who were demanding... Well, demanding you all. The guards were not letting them in, as you don't make deals with terrorizing werewolves so far. Um, when Anna awoke from being... Well, she'd spent long enough unconscious and just woke herself up. <laughs> flew down to the gate, see what's going on, and began a tussle with those very wolves. Torin is still up at the abbey. No idea what's happened to the rest of his team, just that they're not there. Ezra and Sigrid, as they attempted to get the F out of here, or at least make a break for the Wizard of Wines, where they know you have Were Raven backup, and what better than other lycanthropes to fight, were pulled by the belly button into the dungeons of Castle Ravenloft, where they broke out with uh, fellow prisoner Emil Taranescu, uh, said he was being chased by werewolves, Sigrid said he was dumb, and... <laughs> He at least knew the way down so he could lead you back up. And that's where, oh, maybe 60 feet later, you came to a little bit of blockage in the way. Uh, some stones seem to have fallen down this spiral staircase. And with that momentary pause, the Lord of Castle Ravenloft stopped by and just to say welcome back. And that's where we are at the moment. Sigrid, Ezra. You have proven yourselves both so very worthy. I should have seen it from the start. Why start with children of royals who had things given to them merely by heritage of their blood? Why not? Make the offer of rule of Barovia to those that had to strengthen themselves by blood and bone taken. Ezra, you have proven yourself to be a very intelligent, courageous under fire and resourceful wizard. I offer to you, and he points in a general 
northeasterly direction, right at the stone wall, whose bricks peel back, twist upon themselves. You see floors disappear. There is another part of a tower. There is a falling shaft. There is a red, deep glow. And then past that, you see a library, a library of books with shelves 80 feet tall, lined with books, immaculate in design and leather-bound tome. My library would be your library. I am a wizard myself of no small skill. My teacher would be one to teach you even as much as I. I could make that connection for you, Ezra. You would become knowledgeable beyond all mortal ken. Every spell, every school, whatever your curiosity desired, at your fingertips. We could even throw in immortality just to make sure you got to have all the time in the world. Sigrid, you could stay. Make sure that there is justice in this valley at last. I would not make you the same offer made to Dantir and Torin. Instead, be co-rulers. Make sure that when one is in study, the other can be out in the valley, or when one must deliver justice there is still rule here at Ravenloft. I regret the methods with which I attempted to intimidate you. Your mother and sister would be welcomed here in the valley. You have now seen firsthand we can keep them living forever. If they tire of their lives, they can rest, but know that any time they wanted to come back, they could. My servant, Glovia Falonescu, has perfected the technique. You can directly save anyone in the valley. All I ask is that you take my rule here. I will fade. I will pass away beyond the mist. I cannot do this for myself. I must have the release from the ruler of Barovia. No one else has proved their worth. No one until now. What say you? I will lay all my cards upon this table. And as he opens his hand wide, the bricks do close up on the wall of the library. This valley, there's now a glowing image of the entire valley of Barovia, as you've seen it from east to west, from the high Baratok Mountains to the low tidings of the town of Kresk and Balaki and Little Barovia. I have been here 380 years ruling as Lord of the Night. I could do it 
another thousand, tens of thousands. But there is no joy in that for me. I have studied and I have found what limits I could. I offer to you to take my place. You would need to be in Barovia here, but you need not stay forever. With the power of this valley, you can seek out family, friends, loved ones, and bring them here. And when you desire to have a change of your scenery, you can give up your rule to another. Then they will be able to let you leave the valley. You could remain here as my subjects. We could, well, honestly, I don't think Dantir and Torin have that in them to rule this place. Perhaps your new friend, uh, the powerful one with the wings. And as he says this, he is like absent-mindedly like rubbing on his chest and one hand just goes to like the small of his back just very briefly yes powerful she was <laughs> perhaps <laughs> perhaps a triumvirate or a duology between Ezra and this flying paladin. You would have the power to have Sigrid, Dantir, and Torin leave this place. Or they can be your subjects as well. I'll allow you some time to think on this. We may even be expecting a visit from your companions quite soon. I am lowering the castle during this time so that it is uh, once again reachable overland. And he'll snap his fingers and the rubble behind you that's been blocking the rest of the passage uh, is you hear some noises coming from behind it and it's starting to be cleared away and the hands behind it, as you start to see them just moving and deftly taking rocks and, and rubble and setting them to the side, it's not completely clear. It is a brown-haired elven woman of a pale complexion and uh, it's a black-haired young elf, only barely a hundred years. Uh, Aya Glenmere and Nimmel Briarbow fair in feature and wearing robes and dress of exquisite design, high collared and ornate. Uh, they are moving the rocks uh, one mage hand at a time, left and right, and uh, a little bit of stone shaping to get it out of the way. 
My dears, would you show them to the guest quarters? Uh, up near, of course, the great towers. They might see the astronomy floors, the library, uh, perhaps even a rest uh, in our church. Wherever you do feel comfortable. We await further friends. Aya and Nimmel both look at you, and though they're they're smiling, there's a little bit. You've never seen Aya and Nimmel really smile. Uh, the circumstances which you found them first were in the cold mountains where they had been starving for about a week, and then after that last scene. They had just seen their other companion, Erlen Shadowsong, burst open after being implanted with spiders. So, the, it's been some time since then. They've been guests of Strahd this entire time, and they do beckon you to come with them uh, further down the main hall. You can see that this part of the spiral stairs has leveled off. There's a continuance above, but... Uh, there's a bit of a draft coming from there. Out the doorway, it looks like the Great Hall, same as you had once left Ravenloft before. This is true. <laughs> As Emil uh, starts walking towards Aya and Nimmel, he places, Strahd places a hand on his shoulder. Mr. Toronesco, I don't believe that you've had enough time to think on your offer. Pardons, but this one tried to start a rebellion within the werewolf clans. Terrible things they have been doing, and they need to be set aright. Emil, and he'll take his hand off his shoulder, but like point back down towards the dungeons. And Emil is looking towards uh, both you, Ezra, and Sigrid uh, rather desperately. I helped you out. The look on his face as it just falls. And he looks as if to punch either you or Strahd directly in the face. And Strahd's eyes just go clear for a second. And Emil turns around and begins walking back down the stairs to where you know are the uh, waterlogged dungeons. He will be fine. We'll have discussions at a later date with Emil. Perhaps you can help with the werewolf negotiations yourselves. Okay. So we'll leave Ezra and Secret to go up the towers a bit, and there will be some rather plush guest rooms that you get through. Uh, Aya and Nimmel are not real conversational as you go up, but they're, well, maybe there's something there that you might want to find. Okay, at the Abbey of St. Mark. Oh no. Hmm. I will find out here. I've got both of them up, but on the desktop audio. No, 
isn't what's going. We'll pause for a second, finding this one out. Yeah, something's weird about the desktop audio. At all. Hmm. Not pick up our players. Okay. Wonder if this happened in the last week also. Okay. I am going to vertical layout, filters, properties, timestamps, desktop audio, mic, monitor off. Hmm. Capture, 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 all captures on. Ideas, sound settings, maybe. Okay. All right, we'll try that out. So close zoom, or do you mean like turn off the captures? Let's try that out. Okay, everybody will be on pause. Um, Secret had none of the deal, and Ezra has, has been granted more time. That's what's happened. Also, uh, Secret said, like, bye-bye to Emil, and didn't help. <laughs> Maybe we'll meet again, she said. <laughs> we'll see y'all in a few minutes. <laughs>